I've got yet another Mega Mower bag. Look how much stuff I've got this time. There's some cool stuff in here, so I'll stick around. Don't forget to check out the links down below for any items you may see on here which you're interested in, or even something similar to what you're interested in, because I have affiliate links to Banggood and, and AliExpress, and I use those to uh, sort of generate money for the channel to help me buy more things to feature on the channel. So make sure that you, uh, if you're interested in buying anything, use those links down below in the description. Okay, we have some Laura modules. I've featured these loads of times already before, I'm not going to go too much detail about them. If you haven't seen them before, then even the previous mailbag and maybe the mailbag before that, or before that one maybe, I'll cover it really briefly. It's a little module, it's an Ebyte A68T30D, follow links down below if you want to see more about this. And also I've got this one here, which is a smaller version, which is A68T20D. There's different frequencies, the first part there denotes the frequency, which is 68 MHz, you get 915, 433 as well. That's a 100 milliwatt version, this is a 1 watt version. I've covered them before, you don't need to see every detail every time, do you? Do you? Ah, these took a while to arrive. All these before Christmas. It's taken over a month. So these are memory card adapters and memory cards. It's like a, is this five in there? Hmm. I ordered a whole bunch of different ones, different places. I wasn't quite sure which one's going to arrive first. As it turns out, they're all taking a really long time. It's 32 gigabyte cards, which are for projects I'm doing because I've got micro SD card readers on the items. I've done a video on it already. We've seen those by the time we've seen this. Certainly, we've seen them on the Polaris timer interfaces. So I've got these micro SD cards which I'll be using as a redundant system for capturing in case any networking problems. So that's the start. I did want more. I did buy more. They're all somewhere. I guess they're still coming. I'm wondering if this is more lower modules. Packaging's the same. It is. I bought a whole bunch of them, but a lot of times I can only buy two at a time because they're doing like special prices and under special prices you couldn't buy too many at once. So there's lots of times I just bought two and then bought two more the next day and then two more the next day kind of thing in order to get special prices. So these were cheaper than the standard prices by about, I don't know, 30% cheaper, something like that. But uh, all the ones I've tried out so far have been working out certainly fine, I have any problems with any of them. So these are exactly the same as the ones I've showed before, exactly the same modules. This one's a bit bigger, and I've got an idea of what's in here. This was basically sent to me for review, I think. Depends what it's in. It's a, um, I think it's more of a gift then. Here you go. It's for me from Harold. He actually emailed me too. Later on, I might actually order some stuff from him. Because right, this um, person, he makes these things, which are the GPU repair devices, or bypassing devices for the MacBooks. 2011's for the 15 inch, 17 inch. This one's obviously for 15, and he's disabled the GPU. So if you have a failed GPU, you can still use the computer without having to replace it over and over and over again. Anyway, it sent me a little gift. I saw the, the notification that it sent it, then I actually ordered some more of those Ty Sears. How do you pronounce them? T R Sears? Oh, no. The GPU things. <laughs> I saw a notification about this come through. It's a USB tester, apparently. So look at it. This is obviously a gift from him. I don't think it's intended for review, but I'm going to obviously review it as well. I've got two of them. Very nice. What's in here? Binding post. So there you go. Cheap Monk USB tester. So the idea of these, you plug this into a USB port on your computer, and they tell you what's going on. So if you're trying to boot up a computer and it's not booting, or you're trying to determine if there's any life in it, you can plug this into a USB port, obviously the A style, and it will tell you if it's got power or if it's active. So if there's any activity on a USB, because it's got a little chip on there, the uh, indicator lights will light up, telling you that uh, it's actually trying to communicate over USB. So uh, if you look at um, a good example is Paul Daniels when he's doing MacBook repairs. You'll often plug a drive in and wait for drive activity light to flicker and that sort of stuff in order to see if there's any life on the CPU to make sure it's actually trying to actually do stuff because sometimes you can't actually obviously tell which is what these are for. I'll have a quick look at these after I saw the notifications that have been sent. They're actually double-sided LEDs actually because it's through hole that side as well. So those LEDs there you can see they actually there's holes in the board they come through that side and the LEDs that side too. So you can see the most way up this is you can see there's the LEDs are lining up, that's a pretty nice design. Anyway, as I was saying, Paul Daniels uses a hard drive to detect for CPU activity. So this can do the same kind of thing apparently. Let's actually plug one into a MacBook. I've got one sitting here somewhere. I'll try them out. Right, so here's a 17 inch MacBook, which is one I've repaired previously. Plug a drive in. Now my lighting might wash this out, so I might have to turn some lights off, actually, just to get this a bit darker, so hopefully you can see, because my lighting is really bright here. Let's push the power button, see what happens. Here we go, you can see the LEDs lighting up. That was accessing as well, just there. See, there we go. So it's 
USB activity. Both these two LEDs here are on. So you've got power and 5 volts. And the USB activity light is coming on and off. At least it was while I was trying to boot. So that tells you if the CPU is trying to work. Brilliant. Very cool. Here you go. It's clicked again. Very handy device if you want to verify that things are working. Got power to your ports. I can't remember what the difference was between 5 volt and power. There was a distinction between the two. They're not both the same thing. It does mention it on the, on the website. So I'll chuck a link in down below for these things. Thank you very much, Harold, for sending this to me. Very much appreciate it. You can go and check them out too. Just handy little tool. Indeed. I agree with Harold. It is definitely a handy little tool. I remember now what the binding post thing was about. That's for making it easier when you're doing testing. So you can actually put the binding post onto one of these boards because it's got a grounded pad on here. That allows you to stick a probe on there for the, for the zero volt reference. So then you do your voltage measurements, you can just probe around your circuitry and it's ground referenced, well zero volt referenced via the port on this board here. This makes it a little easier. Now I believe there's also a four millimeter hole. Well that one might be a four millimeter hole. So you actually stick a four mil jack straight into it. Let's grab a four mil jack. There you go. See if you can also do that too. There's a reason behind that. Both 4 mil? Yeah, they're both are 4 mil. So yeah, you can do that quite easily. Nice. Bit of thinking there. You also included some more postcards. Chipmunk, because this brand name is Chipmunk. And inside of a MacBook. Don't know which model that is. I've never worked on one, so not this one anyway. So I've got no idea. And here's the information about the device actually. I should just show you this, shouldn't I? Let's have a read of that. That tells you what it all does. What else we got here? This is fairly heavy. This is. Hmm, interesting. Where's the way in? Well, nice getting blunt. What this is? Definitely heavy. Oh, I think it's tape across here. Ah, right, excellent. This is why it's heavy. It's batteries. So these are Samsung, apparently, 35E. 18650-35E says it's supposed to be 3500 milliamp hours. Are they? I don't know. They look the part. They feel about right. Weight is a good indicator about whether or not they're right. I should go and weigh these. I'll go and find out. So this battery here weighed as being 48 grams. Now this one here I've had for a while, which is a 30Q, so it's a 3000 milliamp hours. This weighs 45 grams, so this new battery is very slightly heavier than this one. I was gonna go and check online, there's actually a uh, reference which you can use to check the battery capacity versus weights to tell if they, they look seem like they're the correct weight for what they're supposed to be because it's a good general guide to whether or not they're correct. Cursory look ago 48 grams, 45 grams, 3 grams heavier, potentially better, isn't it? So it's one sixth the capacity higher, it should be one sixth of the weight heavier as well. I don't know, probably. Well, for some reason, I can't find a web page I'm trying to find for the comparisons about the battery weights. I've, I thought I bookmarked it, can't find it. Did a web search, can't find it, oh, it'll be in there somewhere. So if you know of a website which has a listing of all the battery weights for you know what they should be, please chuck it in the comments down below and I'll add it in there, I'll tag it or something, link it at the top or whatever it's called, to try and link to a decent source. So let's say these are 48 grams, and a couple of references I saw were 20, uh, 45 grams for the 2600 milliamp hours, or 2500 milliamp hours, something like that. It makes me wonder if these ones are real, maybe these ones aren't real, I don't know. I haven't actually used them yet. These are definitely heavier, so that's always a good thing, but yeah. Are yeah, they right? I don't know. Hopefully someone will have that information or a link to a site which does list them and, and chuck it down in the comments. If I find it, I'll chuck it in somewhere. They look alright. Antenna. A68, 10.5cm antenna. SMA males. So these are just some smaller ones of what I've already got. I've got some quite long ones, which are sort of twice that length. And sometimes you just want something a bit more compact. And if the range is okay, then I don't need to have the big antennas. I can use these smaller ones. The testing I've done so far has been proven that the range works fine. So I probably can get away with having smaller antennas on the devices and making them a bit less cumbersome. Yeah, not that exciting, but it's four of them. So I'll give them a go. I'll try them out first before I commit to getting any more. So there might be more of them coming yet. These came fairly quickly, so M2 bolts. I think there's some nuts in there too, yeah, M2 nuts as well. I only did these because I was doing these OLED displays, 2.42 inch OLED displays, trying to mount them, and I found the holes on those displays were, I think, 2.5mm. I ended up drilling out to 3 because I only had 3mm bolts. So I've got some 2mm bolts now with nuts, so now I can actually secure smaller screens. Don't have to draw the holes out because that is a little bit risky. But yeah, I needed some more of those because mainly I needed was the nuts because I didn't have any nuts. No, heavy nuts, not a good thing. Thanks to my Patreon supporters. 
I always try and remember to say that, but often forget. Well, okay, these are smaller than I thought they were going to be. So these are some little buzzers, sounders, things, I guess. They're pretty small, actually. These are for the projects I'm doing, but I thought they would be bigger. Hold on, let me check something. So the idea is that they go onto this board here. So let me just um, get one out. So I've got two footprints on this board for two different pin spacings. That one's too wide, and that one, the pin's slightly bent, so maybe I'll bend it in a little bit. There we go. Yay, it fits. It goes on the board like that. That is a plan for these. It's to fit on this board. Probably upside down or something, but that's this little beeper. So when this is active at certain moments, it'll put a little tone out and beep. Uh, I've got 10 of those. I think I've got some other ones coming too. I think I've purchased two different lots, but that took a while to arrive. That, that's been over a month as well. So these are active ones. I think they are anyway. They're supposed to be active ones. Whether they work or not, I don't know. Hmm. I'll show you something which I'll just spot it on here. See a little wire there flapping around, not doing anything. Not connected. I think this one might not work because you know, like, there's the wire. Hmm. I have to check all these. And here's this one, which you've got two wires, and you see in the solder here, you've got a wire there, wire there. So, what's the story with this one? Is it a spare wire? That's just odd. What's it doing? Hmm. I don't know if it works. So, as it turns out, these aren't active buzzers. So that's a voltage straight across that one. That's the one with the straight wire sticking out. It <laughs> still seems to work. And I've got this other one here, which is acting exactly the same way. So I don't think these are anti-buzzers, because I think they're just little mini speakers. You have to put a tone into them in order to make them work, because this is power supply straight on and nothing. Right, so these are some three millimeter inserts. Like press inserts, they go into bits of plastic and it then makes it threaded. Brass inserts, different sizes 1.6, 3mm, 4mm, and 2mm. So, a few different sizes there 1.6, 2mm, 3mm, 4mm, and 3mm again, but different length. I'm thinking maybe I use this when I'm doing 3D printing, might be a 3D print a, a hole, and maybe insert this when it starts going or something. I don't know, I have to look at that. Might be possible, I don't know how strong the plastic will be for that, it might not be strong enough. But it's an option. option. And we have some more antenna, that's 68 megahertz, 20 centimeters. So I've got a bunch of these already, and now I've got plenty, I don't need to get any more than um, I need a lot of units with antennas on, so I've sort of got a selection and a bit of a stock up because I'm going to use them all eventually. It's a bit squashed this one, it's a little bit concerning, especially when it's full of ESP32s. Hopefully there's no damage ones in there. You can see it's got very squashed, in fact, like kind of that squashed. We'll see. I guess I'll find out if there's any bent pins. Nothing obviously damaged. It's probably fine, but yeah. This foam on them anyway to protect them, so we'll see. If it's bent pins, it's not that big a deal. Uh, w Room 32 ones. I needed a bunch of them, so I'll carry on buying. I think I've got about 16 of these things now. That might be enough. Yeah, just. Ah. More memory cards. I thought I bought more. So we've got some USB adapters. Always come in handy. Like a couple of dollars each or something, pretty cheap. Some larger SD adapters and the actual micro SD cards. These are 32 gig SanDisk ones apparently. They're probably genuine. I really wouldn't have a clue. They probably are. The price would probably say to me that they were genuine ones. All right, more buzzers. Ah, these ones might be active ones. These are three volts. Excellent. Give these a go. Looks promising. Power supply's already set three volts. Positive that side. Let's stick it on, see if it makes a sound. Yes, it does. Perfect. That's exactly what I need. Pretty cheap things. They do get a lot out if you take the sticker off. I will probably take the sticker off because it's going to be inside a box, which is going to muffle them quite a bit. Oh, they've got a big box. What's in here? A bunch of these things. Most maybe yes. This little project box housings. There's a little panel which goes in the back there. And it looks like it's got. Rubber boots or something, is it? They rubber or plastic? Plastic boots. There's feet. So I'm hoping I can use this for the project if they're big enough. I hope they are. I've got a 32.4 inch screen in there, which that should actually be bigger than the screen. So I'm not so worried about it, but it's wherever I can get all the boards in there and batteries and things like that. That's the challenge is squeezing all that in there. That's going to be interesting. So if you found it interesting, make sure you give us a thumbs up and uh, subscribe. Click the bell icon if you're not already subscribed. Make sure you click the bell. That's all very important. Otherwise you won't get notified about my new videos. Have a comment down below if you want to have a chat and just discuss anything you've seen. Or if ask any questions, chuck it down there. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye.